Hello, everybody. I'm going to talk to you about, my name is Miguel Useche. My, I'm going to talk to you about my journey from Labs, Lampstack to Jamstack with Ugo. I hope you enjoyed this talk and, and I will try to convince all, to com, to convince all the Lampstack developers to migrate to Jamstack. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Miguel Useche. I'm a freelance web developer from Venezuela living right now in Colombia. I've been doing website for more than 20 years and 99% of them using LAMP stack. I consider my open source promotory and international conference speaker and, and I have been involved in many Latin American communities. And also, yeah, so I'm going to, let's start right away with this talk. And I'm going to start by explaining you what is a LAMP stack in case that you, you are seeing this talk and never use anything from from PHP, no, no, nothing from the LAMP stack. Um, the LAMP stack is an stack that that it's 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 made of different layers, and as you can see in this slide, uh, there are many many. It's composed of about four layers, and with each uh, it's a Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. The P is usually interchangeable with Python or, or Perl. Um, the idea in this, this is a stack that is one of the oldest and the most popular in, in, the, in the world. Uh, I believe that I'm, I'm pretty sure that the, the, the around 60, I don't have the statistics, but I know that a lot, a lot of websites, uh, the most are already served through the stack. Um, the problem with the, with this stack is that it's composed about many things and, and pages. We all will be pro pro processed through the scripting language. That means that if you want to get just an HTML file, even if it doesn't have any dynamic code, any anything, any PHP code, it will still go through all the layers. Well, maybe not to the database, but it will have to go to the web web, web server and to the PHP, and even if you, there's no PHP code, once he knows that doesn't have anything, it will serve you the HTML. So this is like a, like a slow process. Also, this stack is really used by many popular tools like WordPress, Drupal, Magento, MediaWiki. So um, it's still used, it's widely used every day, uh, nowadays. Um, maybe some of you say, why people use LAMP stack? Uh, because LAMP stack is easy to learn. Um, it's available in most sharing hosting providers. I mean, if you purchase a service or if you go to um, any provider, um, there is like 99% that is guarantee that is going to offer to have a LAMP stack solution. Even when you if you go to Amazon and you want to install a virtual machine or any service, they already offer you support for pre-configured LAMP stack. So you just use it, upload files, do some things, and you have already your application running. And since it's really popular and widely used, there's a lot of documentation, guides, and video, so people can learn how to do everything. Um, it has a lot of content and more than any other stack, so that's why most people choose it. And many open source tools and applications are already reading this stack. For example, WordPress, which power around 40% of the internet, um, MediaWiki for in order to create wikis. So since many people already use those tools to create websites and when they need to work with them or do some integrations or customizations, they need to learn the LAMP stuff. So that's why they use it and they keep doing things in that in, in there. Now let's see what is a Jamstack for people who haven't worked with. Uh, Jamstack is basically you have websites. Uh, in the the acronym, the acronym, sorry, acronym is JavaScript APIs and Markup. The idea is that you have a markup written in HTML, in, in raw HTML that it serves the browser, and then with through JavaScript you are going to do some you know dynamic things into the to the page or load additional content through APIs. Um, it's a different approach of how to do website, but <laughs> It's not so difficult to migrate, and it's getting a lot of attention, and the, its use is, is growing each day. And, and also, I think that the future is going to be Jamstack. Um, so you can see the difference. For example, this slide 
Um, you can see on the top how traditional web servers like Lamstab uh, give you content. If you're in a browser, you can see that you, you make a request to a web server and the web server is going to call the scripting language, in my case, PHP, and it's going to execute and start build, building the HTML. But if you need some data, it needs to hold on on that and then go to the database, get retrieve the data, and then go back and start doing and start building the, the HTML code. And then it goes back to the web server and give you and then give you to the to the browser. So this process is really slow because you have once you, you you request any data, you have to go through each of the layers and then go back again in order to retrieve it. But with Jamstack, the idea is that you already have the HTML built, they've already built. And so you just need to have a content, li content delivery network that only gives the content to the browser. And then the browser, if you need any additional data, it can get it from APIs. So it will be much faster because the browser at least will have the, 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 the initial or the most important information right away instead of waiting for the, the whole content to load. Um, why switch to the, maybe you were wondering, okay, why I switch to the Jamstack? Well, basically I, after so many years doing Lamstack, I was go, I was looking for a job and the job required to, to learn Jamstack. So I tried to give a, you know, give a try to see. And then I, I, I fell in love with that. And that's basically why I changed. It was mostly because I needed to apply for a job. Um, so I'm going to explain you how my journey was. Oh, my, my, the, my first step with Jamstack. My first step was to understand the basic architecture, just like what I explained you and how it worked. Um, then I noticed that I needed to think different. You have to think different because now you have to focus on serving a basic HTML and then care, uh, caring about how to load the rest of the content. It's, it, you, have, you don't have to wait for all the content to be loaded and give it. You just give them what they need at the beginning and then load additional through JavaScript. Then you have to choose a static generator. The static generator are tools that, that help you to create the static files that are going to be served to the browser. And after doing some research, uh, actually the Jamstack official website offers you a great comparison table. And you can, and I decided to go with Google because I, I found that it was the best and I still think it's the best. Um, also, I need to research where to host the data and files because now it's different. You don't, in, when you are working on a LAMP tab, you already, you know, like attached to the web server. And when I say web server, I, I, I mean Apache or Nginx. And you are attached to those, to those things, to that stack, and that there's no way to, to do something else. But here you, you, you have a new world of, of possibilities. So I decided to go with Ugo and I started to develop the pages. I wanted to migrate my personal website to Ugo. So why I chose Ugo? It was a very popular and have a good website. I went into blogs and everybody talked about Ugo. They were doing performance tests and Ugo was the fastest. And also when I, when I say very popular, it means that also means that there's a lot of documentation. There is, there is a lot of video tutorials. So it's pretty cool to learn something that many people use and you will have access to many information to start with. Uh, also, when I say when a good website, it's because the website is really good. It explains you everything that Google does in a, in a few paragraphs. And also mm -hmm. uh, the website has a really, really good documentation to start working. Um, it's obvious, uh, English is not my native language. I speak Spanish. So to me, it was really important to have a tool that let me add multiple language to my website. And Ugo already had that built in. So it was really good. It was really great to know that I could create my website in multiple language using just Ugo. Something that attracted me is that Ugo offers a really easy way to modify tem uh, templates. Uh, it's really similar to WordPress, which was the tool that I use a lot. Um, because basically you just need to modify the files and put it in a different folder and that's it. So, so I find it really, really easy to, to create, you know, websites. Also it has support for multiple sources of data. Um, Google supports JSON, why I am, I am, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Supports multiple websites like JSON and HTML, Markdown. 
And so I, now I'm not limited to a, just a regular database, a MySQL, for example. No, now I can have my information used across multiple formats. And the, all the actions are done through the CLI. And I love the CLI because you, I could do everything from the console. I don't need to go to make some clicks, etc. And even if I want to automate things in the future, I could just run, uh, run multiple commands inside a script. And yeah, that's basically why I chose Ubo. My first step with Ubo was like in the picture. I, I saw like a big mountain ahead, but after, after you know, spending some time and doing it, I noticed that the mountain was pretty low and I could go to the top really quickly. Um, the first thing I recommend you when, when, well, the first thing that I recommend you and the thing, the thing that I did was to learn the CLI basic usage, to learn how to install Ugo, how to set up, and everything in the documentation is really simple. Then you need to comprehend the directory structure. Ugo separates the content that is static that you don't need to, I mean, just you're going to server, you don't need to work with in one folder, then another folder is for the content, another folder is to save the data, another content is for the template. So once you learn what are the different directories, everything will be much, much sim simpler. Um, then find a good theme to start with. I was looking, I started with eHero, the hero theme, because it was really, really similar to the design of my personal website. So it was faster to, it will be faster to modify that. So that's what, why I installed it. Then learn how the configuration file works because when I install the theme, I noticed that you need to change something in the configuration to use that theme. And then that's where after, you know, after installing the theme and changing the configuration, then I started to see what else was, it was in there. And I started to modify and playing with, 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 with the website, the configuration. Now there are two, the, the next step was to keep reading the documentation and start, you know, doing the website applying the, the information or if you're like me that you want to you want to go if you want to go straight to the action then what it is is just start editing the theme so that's what i did i started to editing the theme and the content that it had and that's what, how i started to learn ugo working with themes is really really simple uh if you're coming from wordpress is i would say that it's really similar um, the main difference here is that you, you have to clone a repository to install it, or maybe you can drag and drop a, um, a content. But the good thing is that you can, you know, have a, like a external repository that you can pull all the changes, or all the updates without changing anything locally. Um, you don't depend on, a, on any other tool, just, you know, control version repos. repos. Um, and just only need to clone a repo and in order to install it, and you need to clean Clean, uh, git code, sorry, git, git clone the URL and then put it in the theme folder. Also, most themes include theme example data. The hero template included some great example data that I used to learn the basis. So I could understand the difference between, you know, uh, content and having everything in a data folder. Also, the themes in Ugo are coded to display content. This sounds obvious, but when you come from the land stamp, usually when you download a theme from one of the popular websites, the themes include code in order to, you know, to work with the, with cache, to minify things, and to apply optimization to some assets, uh, I don't know, do code to compress images, but those things are, are outside from, I mean, they are not needed to display the, the content. In Ugo, everything in the theme only include code to display the the content. Everything else is outside. It's, it's, it's solved from from a, it's solved it's solved from a, how say like a another way, not from the not not at the theme level. To edit the themes files, you just need to override the file or just make a copy and put it in the layout folder. For example, if you need to change for the header of a theme, and, and let's say that the theme the the, the file is inside layouts partials, then you just need to copy the same file in the same structure on their layout. And by keeping the same hierarchy, you can just open, then you just need to open and start doing your changes. And Ugo will, you know, take your, your header HTML first instead of the theme one. So it's really, really simple to modify just only the part that you need to change and without altering all the code. And now if there is an update to the theme, you just need to git pull 
and since the, your changes are in the layout folder, they are easy to, to handle and also um, uh, faster, you know, to, to work with. Um, okay, now working with content, uh, that is something that also changed a lot to me because like, like I say, now in Ugo, you don't depend on a central database. You can have the content across different formats and across different places. For example, since my website was fully, you know, static content, I moved it to to Ugo. And Ugo supports multiple formats, HTML, JSON, YAML, Markdown, and many more. If you see here the folder, uh, for example, I could have, well, I have my website just one page. So I have in content, I have my homepage, and I could have the content in different language, even English or Spanish, and I could have some global code. I decided to go with the Markdown rule, route because it's much faster than, than coding in HTML. Also, something that I loved about Ugo is that I could have in the data folder, I could have some like a local database. So I have like a mini database for the community section. It's, it's just a regular JSON file with all the tokens and all the text in there. So it was really easy to access to that data and I could separate it in language. So. Um, so, so, you know, it's, it was much faster. And in this case, seeing the social media is the same across languages, I could have, you know, like a, like a general um, content that it's not attached to a language. And then just the static content, things that are not going to change, I could just put it in there. So it was really great when, how Ugo treats the content like regular files and folders. So if it comes to from the Linux world, it's kind of similar how the operating system works. Uh, you can organize the content in sections, like I said here, in sections that you can, you know, reuse and put in somewhere else. And also Ugo supports related content. It means that you can create blogs and you can categorize uh, uh, all the information. Uh, also, um, you can use taxonomy, not, not, not just for word, for, sorry, not only for blogs. You can use it for any kind of content. You can add short codes or snippets in order to reuse content in multiple places. Um, and, and if you need any more information on things that are going to change, you can get data from any other APIs just using regular J JavaScript. There is nothing else that you need to, to do. Also, Ugo, Ugo, Ugo has pipes and functions. The pipes and functions are um, things, for example, like, like the, the, the functions are things that run in the templates and lets you choose the workflow of how everything will be rendered. Uh, for example, in, if you can see in the sample, it says if site is server. I mean, it detects if the if the website is running a server or in production mode, then load this this product this code, or if not, then then run the the testing code. Also, uh, it gives you you know it gives you the control to render in a way to process or format all the content. For example, in here, I can include some other HTML and play with with that. Also, um, pipes and pipes let you process assets. For example, here's how I load my CSS file in my template. For example, um, it, it has a hook, a hook that after the you know the CSS is generated, then run a pipe to minify. Then the con the result of that min minification, put it in a put it in a fingerprint. So it adds like a hash at the end in order to load the changes to force the browser to load the changes. And then execute the post-process hook, and it's really, really good because it's a really simple. You just need to change the different, um, you know, actions, and they will run faster. And it's much more simple than starting calling PHP things. Oh, uh, the deployment. Okay, deployment with Ugo is was really easy, especially if you come from a LAMP world. Because it's just uploading optimized files to the cloud. It's not like in like WooCommerce that, well, sorry, WooCommerce or WordPress or those things that you have to upload files. You need to uh, implement some things to you know to differentiate between the core program and your changes. You need to upload the new content, but there is database content in there that could be that, that was changed locally. So it's really hard to, to to deploy with with. Well, it's not really hard. I mean, it's harder to deploy things. In P when you come from the PHP or LAMP world. Here is just uploading optimized, optimized files to the cloud. 
And, and Ugo already offers deployment to multiple services. So it doesn't matter if you have, you know, Netlify, Firebase, GitHub, AWS, Cloudflare, any kind of those services, Ugo already offers a deployment to that. We just run you one single command. And for example, if you come from LAMP stack and you already have a LAMP server, you can deploy through SSH. You just need to run this command and this command will call Ugo in order to compile files. And then you just run rsync and rsync is going to connect you to the, uh, using HA SSH to your any folder and it will start rsyncing. The good thing with rsync is that it's going to download all, only the changes. The, the files that have changed since the last since the previous deployment, so it will be a uh, will be really really fast. So you can reuse your LAMP server in order to to serve the Google content, or you can migrate to to the cloud because since now you only need to upload files to the cloud, you can even you know buy a Amazon S3 service and put the files in there and and point your domain to a certain file. And that's it. You just or now you have a running website by accessing just to to an HTML point to an HTML file, and you can uh, execute some this deploy command after any GitHub, so you can automate your deployment. You just need to well, okay, I made a commit into the theme folder, and maybe I changed something the JSON file to update my content. Then once I did the commit, it will call Ugo and will execute the command to deploy and you know the command to deploy it and it will upload the files to the cloud and that's it. You, now you have a new version of the website with new CSS, with new catch. I mean the, the browser will download the the new the new changes just by changing some tests. Now the benefits of using web the uh, Ugo. I up I up, I made my own personal website in Ugo. Um, the page speed inside went from 40 to 90 for mobile and from 85 to 99 in mobile desktop. It, it changed the color to green, which means that it's really, really good to 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 load the website. Um, I managed to remove all the non-use CSS. This is really hard when you come from the LAMP world because when you when, when you are using LAMP, all the the, the, co the pages are generated dynamically. So it's really hard to detect which, which CSS is not being used in this website, which, which one in the other one. And but the Ugo was really easy, just running a pipeline and it when it created all the website, it created with the correct CSS. So I managed to make the website lighter and both from the, when downloading and when executing the file. Also, the static files are served from a CDN, which is more, much faster because uh, when you serve files from the CDN, they don't include the cookies, there are less headers, there are less things that need to be sent to the to the client to the client. And the first contentful pane initial HTML loading was around five times faster. So I managed to load the, the web website very much much faster. And the content moved from database to a git repo. Now I didn't depend on a database and apply changed or maintaining a database. I only need to go to the git repo and change the content just right away. I can even do it from GitHub or GitLab web interface and change it in there and save the, the, the content and it will be reflected on my you know production website. And also, well, I managed to reduce the cost because now since I removed the, the database uh, and the web service, uh, the web server, I, I managed to remove my LAMP server and serve the content just from the CDN, which is which is you know less money, less maintenance, and a lot of things. Okay, so I to, to, to end this talk, I want to give you some tips for when you are coming from a LAMP environment world. And this is like uh, when you're working with Jamstack or with Ugo, it's like making a website in the 90s. Just write HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and upload it to the internet. Nothing else. Um, you need to move the static content to Ugo in the backend for dynamic content. So, for example, if you have things that are not going to change, like your company name, I don't know, the menu contents or... Things that are, that are static, just move it to Ugo. It will be much faster, and you will take you know you take loads from the backend, and you don't need to to have like a big big backend. Just only serve dynamic content from there. Uh, Ugo does some optimizations and optimizations for you, so you don't have to worry about hey I need to improve my SEO or I need to find how to minify the CSS. No, Ugo already does that. So you need to search for pipes and any 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 you know 
automation code that can exist in order to improve your regular flow. Um, and also, I just invite you to try Ugo now. It's a really great tool. I think I'm going to start using more, 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 more now because my website will load faster, easier to maintain, less resources, and I think the future. So I think that I hope you like it. This is my talk. Thanks for your attention. You have my email and my Twitter account in there. So have a nice day.